Right, and a little bit of brandy. A little bit of brandy being obviously what gets a pineapple drunk. Uh -huh. So the most important thing, obviously the longer the pineapple sits in the alcohol, the more intoxicated it becomes. Mm. So I think to help Vic with his you know, depression this morning, a little bit of extra brandy. A little bit of extra brandy, I think. And we'll put a little bit of sugar in here. This is and then we'll leave this to marinate. For those of you who don't know how we got the flesh out of the pineapple, I always try to now. chop them up, right? Not that I cook often, but when I do, I try to chop them up and they always get little... They're just not nice. They're just not nice. Well, you see, the secret is don't chop it up too much because yeah. then it loses its shape and appearance. And the beautiful thing about a pineapple, I remember the first time I saw pineapples, I was on a trip to Swaziland with my parents. And I saw these big pineapples. These they were like ones. these giant... It was like you could go out and hunt these pineapples. So we cut the pineapple open like this, creating obviously a little bit of a gap inside. Don't and look what like we a want to accomplish TV. is this. Voila. See, oh, you can only do this so on TV. Eh? Right. That you can make it like a little make doll's house, man, and you can stick things inside. <laughs> I don't did know it? about a doll's did house, it? but uh, did it? Did it? Did typical it? vegetarian, you would want to play with the fruit, eh? So here we go. We've got the pineapple open up like this. Okay. Well, now that the pineapple's open, should we finish the rest in the second half? Yeah, I think let's should let the pineapple get drunk for yes, a while. Yes, let's get sure. the pineapple get very Excellent. drunk. Very, very drunk. Fantastic. Still to come on the Toasty Show, we're going to be talking to a five-boy band called Salvador and uh, a very controversial priest there. You don't want to miss this. He's talking about some very interesting things. And uh, the beauty editor of our magazine, Ingrid, is going to be chatting to us. And, of course, he's talking about models this whole week. I think that's what got him so depressed. Models or the fact that there were no strippers this morning? Oh, I don't that know. Is well. <laughs> that is well. That is well. It's time it down, for a eh? break. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken pineapples in the kitchen with Shane. How's it going? Well, we've marinated the pineapple. This pineapple looks pretty intoxicated. It smells oh, like good. some of the drivers we have in South Africa. <laughs> it's oh, it smells, it smells nice. It's, it's not quite sweet. It's yes, not too, it doesn't smell like brandy. Sweet. That's right. Well, that's mm. a little bit of sugar and obviously a fresh fruit. Yes. Now for the recipe we take our pineapple, we add a little bit of white chocolate to it, toss it in here just to get this chocolate flavor through. The reason I use white chocolate, it has more of a creamy type texture with the fresh fruit. Because we're going to stick this in the oven, right? That's right. We're going to do that in a moment. Now what we do is we can just dust a little bit of almonds on the top here. So you All actually right. use one pineapple for each One pineapple serving. for each person. Unless oh. you want to get romantic and you want to share that with your lover. <laughs> you put we'll some be talking to the pastor about <laughs> that. <laughs> double whipped cream in there. There we go. Now we beat our egg white nice and stiff. We try and get a few peaks in there. Don't overbeat your egg white because just now you're going to be looking and you're going to have to run out and get another six eggs because uh, uh. if you overbeat it, it loses its stiffness and its, its, uh, and it's ability to actually make like a light meringue. You can add sugar to it, but I don't like overdoing the sweetness. The actual base of this recipe is the fruit. So now we take our Stick some over. beaten meringue. Instead of using cream, you could always use yogurt if you have like a, a dairy intolerance or something like that. Yogurt is very ah. good. Dust with some almonds. Some almonds and there let's stick go. it in the oven. Bingo. Some sugar. Sugar. Ooh, that looks delicious. Pop in the oven. In we go. And we'll let's leave it in there for a little while. To check on it in a moment. We'll come back and check oh, on it in a fantastic. moment. Fantastic. Mm, it's going to look very nice. It's going to be absolutely Drunk? perfect. Eh? Drunk Porsche's pineapple. pineapple. Mm. We can rename it today. Eh? After you. There we go. There we Thank you. I like that very much. Well, I mean, this is... Ciao now. Are you ready? Good Shall grief. What do we ready? need this for? Hang on to this. I'll hold it. Just yeah. Be prepared. Be prepared. Ah. Yeah, you must go. Have that standing by. It's standing by. I'm ready. I'll Not shoot anything and everything. Magic this time of the morning, just before everyone thought I've gone crazy. I'm making lazy pineapples. Voila! Yeah! There we go. That's oh, ready, and I think that will sort out any is. depression, no, midlife man. crisis, sex problems. You know problems, what we should call it? Whatever. We should call it a flaming drunken pineapple. Flaming drunk, or you mean flipping drunk? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Why didn't you see before it burns blood? Huh? How much have you had to drink this morning? It's making it even worse. Okay. Damn it. Ow. Let's go. One, two, three. There we are. That's it. Would you like to give it a taste? You just blew it like the first time. Yeah, oh, well, you know. Oh, this being is a chef, You have to be able to handle crisis management in the kitchen. <laughs> there oh. we go. Tuck nicely in there. Remember, for your vegetarian, mm. it's egg white, not egg yellow, so it's 100% safe and, and ozone friendly and all those things. So, what do you think? Does it drink it, enough or too much? A little bit too No, he's a bit too drunk. A bit too drunk. He's perfect for Vic. Ma well, then let's go and let's let's give, go give, let's go it give him a taste. Eh? I don't think we're going to need that anymore. Eh? I can not use it on Vic. Maybe it'll wake him That's up. That's a good idea. Come Maybe on. we can get him out of that depression. Exactly. Let's have a good performance. Yeah. Enjoy and take some life-giving sustenance out of that. <laughs> Ciao now. <sighs> Hello, it's Dominic Campbell here. We have Peter Schumacher. Crack a table. Let's move with him. Okay, I'm sitting over here oh, and standing. Sitting and standing at the same time with uh, Chef Shane Sauvage. And uh, you're from a restaurant in Pretoria called? La Pentola. La, La Pentola. That's it. Where you kind of have like fusion. We do a bit of fusion, a bit of international flavors, a lot of South African crocodile, all the interesting right. exotic things from our country. Apparently Definitely. there's a mountain in Pretoria, they're behind the mountain. Yeah. Great. Not, not the mountain with the tablecloth on it. That's no, in Cape Town. That's it's another one. Mountain. I know that one. Ours is a little bit smaller. Smaller. Yeah, not the so hill. many postcards of it, hey? Right. That's right. Now, what is this that you've got here? It looks like some kind of poultry. You always put me through the, the works here. If you guys have a look over here quickly, this isn't chicken breast, this is turkey. You can see the distinct color and the difference. It almost has like a like slight salmon pink color to it. Yes. So I'm going to start going through the recipe with you guys. Right. This is a nice, simple one, beautiful for winter. Okay. Something interesting in the case What's that of, you're putting in this there? This is a little bit of paprika and some other spices that I mix up. My secret 11 herbs and spices. Oh, right. So for your turkey. That's it. And that is flour. This is flour. We put the turkey in the flour. Always coat your meat, usually before you pan fry. A little bit of flour it keeps it nice and tender. You're supposed Thanks to be doing so. this. You know, I've, I'm so comfortable with you in the kitchen ever since we had that first cooking yeah. lesson together. Yeah, just You've saved got a grip from going bingo. Snap. Uh. This is a little bit of sage. I prefer to use fresh sage, but I really tried this morning. And with winter coming and eating the herb garden away, you don't tend to have that. No, you don't. So you fuse that butter and the sage together, and you slowly start adding your turkey. Important to add the herbs to the butter first, because as the meat and the flour absorb the uh, butter, it also flavors the meat beautifully. As I said, for winter, this one's a good one. A little bit of cream pasta on the side. But um, great. let's get it started. OK, we're going to get it started there. And you can join us in uh, a little while to see how it's carrying on. But um, I heard noises that sounded distinctly like Vic coming from City's bedroom. Go have a look there. Combination of oh, a dinosaur oops. and dog. Now, now. <laughs> Hello, all this taking off of clothes has made me a bit peckish. Um, peckish. So, yeah, <laughs> so I've got Shane Savage here from La Pen. Huh? La Pentola. La Pentola from Pretoria. That's right. Cooking us some exotic turkey dish. You came back just in time, Norm. As you yes. see, my turkey started to brown beautifully over there. Yeah. Secret with turkey, if you don't want it to be tough, you must make sure you don't overcook it, you know? Now what I'm going to do... How, sorry, here's a question I've been wanting to ask. How do you cook a fillet thingy like this, mm -hmm. make it brown on the outside but still tender on the inside? How do you do that? Like I said earlier on, in the beginning of the slot, is coat it with a little bit of flour. Yeah. Make sure that you keep all the juices inside and it absorbs the butter beautifully. Now what are you doing Just over here? Just want to recap on in? the recipe. What I'm doing here is we've got the turkey. It's now sautéed beautifully golden brown. I've yeah. taken some mozzarella, coated it with it. A yeah. little fresh leaf of basil. Just yeah. to add a bit more to the flavor. Like in all my, st my, my style of recipes, what I do is fusion of flavors. It's, right. it's what fusion. I enjoy. That's right. So now here we add the mozzarella, we add the basil, and then and this is a little bit of black forest ham, or you could use an alternative Parmesan ham. And we coat that lightly like this over the cheese, so everyone can see what we're doing over there. Yeah, that looks good. And this, good. Is, this is the crucial moment, like I always say, there's the crucial moment. This is the, the one where you moment. don't want to be disturbed. This is the one you don't want to miss, because otherwise you miss the whole 
trick here. We add some muscadel, but important to keep the te turkey tender. We add the muscadel and we immediately put the lid on the dish. Now we're going to cut that, cover that up over there and we leave this to steam for a few moments. Great! So all the flavors can fuse beautifully there. This and get the fusion at La Pentola. Yeah. La Pentola. But remember, remember that your muscadel is a South African dessert wine. You could use masala as an alternative or maybe a little bit of old brown sherry. But muscadel is usually to, generally to very choice. well priced and enjoyable. Okay, thanks Shane. We're going to come back now and see how it's going. Yeah. So we put What's those, that? You just threw in there? Pepper? That's a little bit of coarsely ground black pepper. And, and we garlic. Just, yeah, not too much garlic because your garlic's going to burn before your prawns are actually cooked. Okay. Start adding these flavors in lightly so that the uh, stack on a crayfish shell. A little bit of. But those prawns. Prawns are. Oh, we're snared. Yes.